Welcome to Release Day. I'm Alex Heward. Seldom do we realize how often we are asked to be courageous for our family, for our community, for ourselves. Daniel Monkman was born into the indigenous community of Broken Head Ojibwe Nation in Manitoba. And over the past 10 years, Daniel has worked his way across the West Coast before landing in Hamilton, Ontario, where he's put a focus on his genre-bending moccasin gaze music. While Daniel has proudly embraced his indigenous heritage, it didn't come easy, nor immediately. He's lost loved ones, faced racism, and overcame substance abuse. It's through these life-altering experiences and a healing journey that he's recognized the courage and bravery it takes to come out of those moments a better person. It's these moments that have led to his brilliantly composed debut album, Bleached Waves. I wanted a lot of the songs to be, um, I wanted them to have a message. I wanted them to have a message, but I didn't, I didn't know if I wanted to be political with my lyrics. You know, I, I wanted it to be a really friendly album because I wanted people just to listen to music and kind of reflect maybe on themselves. You know, honestly, that's where it came down to. I, I really just wanted people to, that's why there's a lot of instrumentals in the, in the albums because I just wanted people to, you know, sit there because we're always just, you know, there's, you know, this 24 seven hour news cycle has just gotten everybody wanting to like be told what to think next. And I think that if you, if you just give people some space to kind of, to just be in them with themselves, you know, you start to, you start to think about, um, you know, being my more mindful. Why did you land on that name for, for your art, artist name? I started digging into my past, and uh, when I when I started my healing journey, I I learned about the seven grandfather teachings, and amongst the seven seven teachings, there's um, Zungadawan, and it means it's the courage part. And I thought a lot about my mom and my friends who have passed on, and you know my dad, and you know the sacrifices that um, you know that everyone has to make in order to make themselves better. You know, and for me. Uh, part of the sacrifice was one giving up subst a substance that helped me cope with my anxiety and post traumatic stress. You know, it takes a lot of courage to give that up and be like, okay, I'll face everything and, you know, try to heal from it. And I didn't understand the sacrifices that my mom made until I was an adult and, you know, I went through my own trials and tribulations and, and, um, a lot of a lot of the name comes from you know my family and my heritage but mainly you know my mom so now we are joined by Brendan McCartney who is the uh, owner of Double Denim Management and Dan's manager how did you hear about Dan, especially with it being Dan's debut album. Uh, well, Dan actually uh, he emailed me. He just he sent me this album. Uh, my my good friend Daryl Smith out in Halifax, who uh, who gave me the name Double Denim. Uh, he, I trust him more than I trust myself when it comes to music. So I just sent him the record, and I was like, this this is shockingly good to me, but maybe I'm crazy. What do you think? And he wrote <laughs> back, he's like, you need to work with this if you can. When do you guys start thinking about the to-dos, you know, thinking about the vinyl pressing and start thinking about the music videos, even the singles that you're going to put out? The day that you re like the day that there's a final record, there's masters handed in. Okay, well, when do we want to start getting this out? And we need to now plan this out. So if it's a year from now, great. Let's start working backwards from there. We need the videos a month before this. We need this a month before that. We need the vinyl has to go out three months prior, da, da, da. And I find that's the easiest way to do it. You just work backwards um, and then just make sure that, yeah, everything can slot into the timeline. Well, you've given yourself plenty of contingency time in case the vinyl plant, um, you know, in case a global pandemic happens and the vinyl plant gets backed up, yeah. uh, things like that. But I think that, that, I mean, even Dan's writing some new stuff right now, by the time he gets, you know, a very solid mix of a song that might be on a record out in a year, we might start be talking about, uh, hey, we should work with John Smith again. And he's a great director. He'd be perfect for the song based on its, you know, the sonic qualities of it or something. So 
those conversations are always ongoing, but the moment that the record's done, I think those conversations kick in overdrive and a plan, mm -hmm. even a rough one is created quite quickly after that. And can you guys go into a little bit about what that relationship is like between the artist and the manager, how you guys come to decisions that are gonna be made and the expectations from both sides? The way I view my job is to distill uh, the best ideas down and then uh, present them to Dan. Nothing at the end of the day is the label's choice. It's not my choice. Um, simply because it's not my art. It's not their art. It's Dan's. And we're very lucky that we work with really, really great publicists and a label who, um, they're not just open to having the artist um, control their, their career and their art in that way. They, they want that. They expect that. Dan, do you have sort of something in mind, you know, about how and where you wanted to take this album? Um, well, I think for that side of it is, you know, um, them lining things up with the publicist. You know, with the content, the music videos that we make, they kind of, from my understandings, they, uh, the publicist kind of, you know, sends it out to all the people they know, and then they kind of wait to hear back if they actually want to feature it. And I guess that's a pretty lengthy process. So you just got to see the bigger picture rather than, you know, feeling pressure from my peers being like, oh, when your rec when's your record going to come out? I realize, you know what? You put a lot of time to this, you know, there's why, why you put so much time and effort into this and then just to like, you know, push it out half-assedly. One of the big things was the fact that Dan does have a really um, compelling story. Um, and so we realized that the more time we can spend um, telling that story and telling it properly and having, really having Dan uh, explain it a, a, as much as he wanted to, because uh, it really does feed into the, the themes and um, the themes of the record. So the, the original idea wasn't to wait a year and a half or so to put it out. Um, but again, you, you have to kind of um, go where the current takes you. Yeah.